pew, 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 pew. What's up everybody, Brandon Wersch here and welcome back to another video. Today we're talking about light exposure, specifically natural light from the sun, UVA and UVB radiation. How much should you be getting every single day? And we're gonna break down the benefits from your immune system to your mood, your cognitive abilities, cardiovascular disease, blood pressure, all that good stuff. So. Hopefully you guys are liking this content. If you are, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you're alerted every time I post new videos. And without further ado, let's jump into the video. So first off, let's talk about the cognitive benefits that can be gained from getting exposure to sunlight first thing in the morning. A recent study showed that exposure to 30 minutes of blue wavelength light in the morning subsequently leads to faster response time on a cognitive working memory task and greater functional brain response within the prefrontal cortex than comparable exposure to amber light. The study also shows that a single exposure to blue light during the daytime can lead to enduring measurable changes in brain activation and speed of performance during subsequent completion of a cognitive challenging task. So there's a lot of cognitive benefits to just getting 30 minutes of sunlight or blue light exposure first thing in the morning. The reason why we know that is because our circadian rhythm is closely tied to light exposure. When we first wake up, it's critical that we get this light exposure not only on our eyes, but also our skin to be able to signal to our body, hey, we need to be awake, we need to be active. That's gonna release cortisol into your body. Cortisol getting demonized a lot for um, causing adrenal fatigue and all this stress and other problems, but cortisol is quintessential. It's like the natural cup of coffee that you get first thing in the morning. So getting that light exposure is gonna help to set your circadian rhythm and give you energy throughout the day. The next study I'd like to show you is in regards to cardiovascular disease and blood pressure. An ecological study shows that the sun or ultraviolet exposure have inverse associations with blood pressure and cardiovascular disease. Although sunlight is the primary source of vitamin D, recent meta-analysis of clinical trials have not reported a beneficial effect from vitamin D supplementation on blood pressure or cardiovascular disease specifically. Sunlight may have beneficial effects independent of vitamin D. And the reason for this, and I'll pull up a figure here to kind of help explain this, is sunlight is activating on a a lot of different pathways, like over 15 different pathways in our body, not just the production of vitamin D3 that most people tout. Oh, I need to get my vitamin D so I get out in the sun. There's a lot of physiological benefits to getting in the sun. Vitamin D is just one that we've kind of singled out. Now this also points out the fact that vitamin D supplementation isn't as great as people might think. I even take vitamin D3 as a supplement during the winter time because I realize I'm indoors more and I'm not getting as much sun exposure. So we can measure serum blood levels and see that vitamin D levels do go up, but it doesn't seem to impact your risk of uh, cardiovascular disease or change your blood pressure. So there are other benefits to supplementing with vitamin D, but it doesn't seem to affect those two. The next thing I wanna share with you guys is how UVA and UVB light affects your circadian rhythm. If you guys didn't know, your circadian rhythm is your master regulator of time inside your body. It's what regulates day and night cycles and what hormones get released when. So by exposing yourself to light first thing in the morning, what you're doing is you're acting through your skin, which communicates to your brain that it's daytime and that we should release a certain set of hormones like cortisol. Cortisol gets released first thing in the morning and it's like our natural cup of coffee. It's what upregulates our metabolism, kickstarts energy, and starts burning glucose to get us going and moving and active and cognitively sharp, right? Melatonin is our sleeping hormone. It's naturally supposed to be released when the sun goes down and night falls. Light impacts that circadian rhythm, if you guys didn't know. Exposing ourselves to devices late at night is gonna artificially send blue light into our eyes and our skin, which is gonna tell our body that it's still daytime, which is why you can sit up and binge watch Netflix until two o'clock in the morning and not feel tired. It's because you're artificially keeping your body awake. Just like by exposing yourself to sunlight first thing in the morning, you can actually kickstart your circadian rhythm. Tell it that it's, it's daytime, it's gonna release cortisol, and it does this through your HPA axis, your hypothalamic pituitary adrenal gland axis. These three glands are gonna make up a majority of what is called your endocrine system. This is the hypothalamus is your master regulator of your hormones. So it's gonna dictate 
the release of cortisol, melatonin. It's gonna help dictate whether or not your metabolism is fast or slow, whether you should be sleeping or awake, how much energy you should have, how much glucose you should be burning. Everything that, as well as testosterone, estrogen, all of these things are regulated through the hypothalamus. So by exposing yourself to light, you're helping to regulate your entire hormone system, including your mood. So I recommend exposing yourself to, like I said, 30 minutes of natural light. That's gonna be giving you that beneficial blue light. Now, how much is too much light? Well, that's gonna depend on your pigment. So if you guys ever notice that people that live closer to the equator have darker skin and people that live in northern latitudes have fairer skin. The reason for this is because they're exposed to more UVA and UVB radiation. So by producing melanin in the skin, it's gonna darken the skin, therefore allowing that person to be exposed to sunlight much longer throughout the day without the deleterious effects of it or the uh, DNA damage that comes with sun exposure. So depending on your ethnicity, and where you live currently is going to play a big factor in how much sun exposure that you should receive each day. So for me saying 30 minutes, that's more or less just like an average guideline. But if you have darker skin, that means you're gonna to need to spend more time in the sunlight to get those same benefits. If you have really fair skin and you're living in a high northern latitude like Sweden, that means you might have to spend even more than 30 minutes in order to get the same or adequate levels of sunlight. Just a quick tip for you guys if you're curious about uh, how sun affects different people. So there you have it guys, I've just broken down how UVA and UVB radiation impacts your mood, your cognitive abilities, your hormone levels, as well as your risk for high blood pressure and cardiovascular disease. If you guys found this helpful, leave me a like down below. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. And leave me a comment if you guys have any questions or if there's any other benefits that I didn't mention in this video when it comes to UVA and UVB radiation. I'm also interested in hearing what kind of tools you guys are using at home to help with uh, light exposure during this quarantine. But as always, guys, I'd like to leave you with my final words. Be healthy, be active, and be yourself. Everyone's got something to give this world. You just got to go out there and give it. I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.